All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar to learn more about Lakehead University and our outdoor recreation parks and tourism program. This information session is primarily for students, their families, and supporters who are in Canada and looking at exploring undergraduate programs or their first degree. We will not be covering grad studies and have limited information for our international students. So you are more than welcome to attend, but please be aware of our session content. We have great resources available in other sessions for students beyond a Canadian high school student. Before we begin with our outdoor rec parks and tourism side of our webinar, there's just a few housekeeping items that I would like to speak to. So please note that all participants except for our hosts and our panelists have been muted for the presentation portion of this webinar. You don't have to worry about any background noise going on. You don't have to worry about cats that I have locked out of my office personally, but no noise in your background. You don't have to worry about being on video. You just have to sit back, relax, and enjoy the information that we have for you this evening. We do still encourage a Q&A though. So questions are always welcomed. So questions and answers, answers will be worked into the presentation. So you can submit your questions through our Q&A function that's located in the bottom navigation bar. Alternatively, you, you may also use the chat feature. The Q&A function just works best as we can either answer the question directly through this feature or mark the questions to be answered live as we walk through this information session. Please also be aware at this time that we are mostly all working remotely. There's a couple of us who are on campus, but as a result, there might be some unavoidable or unexpected noises in our backgrounds. You don't have to worry about yours, but we are doing our best to still be in an environment where we are closed off from different noises, but uh, we can only do so much at, at certain times. Lastly, please note that we are also recording this webinar. You may have, some, have had something pop up on your screen when I marked it to be recorded. So to start off, you're probably wondering who I am. I've been chatting with you this whole time so far, but my name is Erin and I'm the Recruitment and Events Coordinator at Lakehead. I've been with Lakehead for a couple of years and I'm actually an alumna of Lakehead. I've grown up in Thunder Bay all my life, so won't tell you how far or how uh, long ago I did graduate, but I am an alumna of Lakehead and very proud of that as well. So I'm your host for this evening. Um, and then I will also have my co-host introduce themselves as well. Hi folks, uh, my name is Josh, very similar to Aaron. Uh, I'm born and raised in Thunder Bay, went through uh, Lakehead for my undergraduate as well. Um, I am one of the recruitment officers here in the undergraduate recruitment office and uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, connecting with all you new students. Thank you, Josh. Now we're gonna jump into our faculty introductions and the students that are joining us today. Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Julie Rosenthal. Uh, all of our students just call me Julie and uh, I'm an assistant professor. So I'm one of the instructors in the program and I also have a role as the assistant director. Um, so I teach a, a fair bit of the classes um, and I also, I, I am alum an alumna of the program. I came to outdoor recreation from Southern Ontario when I was, oh, quite young. <laughs> and um, I took the double degree with natural science and outdoor recreation. Um, I ended up specializing in parks management. I did my master's and PhD elsewhere and came back to teach in the program. I live in Thunder Bay and I really love it here. And uh, I really consider it my home, even though um, I grew up elsewhere. So I'm really glad that you've joined us today and I'll pass on uh, our introductions to Abby next. Hi, my name is Abigail Beatty. I'm a third year outdoor recreation student. Um, I'm not from Thunder Bay. I'm from Tweed, Ontario, which is in Southern Ontario. And I'll pass it on to Sam. Hi, um, my name is Sam Rogowski. I am a Thunder Bay local um, who is finished or going into my fourth year in ORPT. Um, I am in the double degree program with education with my teachables in um, environmental studies and um, sorry, general science. Um, I am also the uh, Outdoor Recreation Student Society president um, outgoing from last year as well as incoming um, for the 2022-2023 year. Thank you everyone for your introduction. So before we get started with the Outdoor Rec Parks and Tourism portion of the webinar, um, 
we're going to start with what you can look forward to as a future Lakehead Thunderwall. At Lakehead, we encourage you to pursue your passion, but also to step out of the crowd. What we mean by this is pursue something that you're good at or something that interests you. We have many exceptional stories of what our grads are doing and not everyone's results are going to be the same. Our Lakehead grad site, how our small class sizes with 90% of our classes having fewer than 60 students contributed to their success or about the fact that an influential professor knew them by name and helped them along their journey. Connecting you to real world experiences matters to us at Lakehead by providing you with opportunities to learn beyond the classroom and take your expertise into the local community, the lab and the workplace you will not only further your knowledge, but also gain practical, relevant skills that will position you very well in your future. Lakehead also offers an unbeatable financial aid package. We are number one in Ontario with over $11 million annually provided to students just like you to help fund your education. Our programs will prepare you for your future. You'll be engaged in hands-on learning environment that will equip you with skills and experience to enhance your theoretical learning. 99% of our students by fourth year have engaged in some form of experiential learning. And this is something we are very proud about at Lakehead. Whether it's cooperative education, a practicum or placement, internships, or even working with community partners, you will learn by doing. We also use our natural environment, which is this is the perfect program to showcase that to our advantage. Stepping out of our campus in Thunder Bay right into our backyard, we are surrounded by the beauty and mystery of a natural laboratory. So it's really not unusual to see a class outdoors learning in different and extraordinary ways. You could practice teamwork or leadership skills on a canoe or a hiking trip in one of our courses. We hear many stories from graduates who have received job offers or started their career before even walking across the stage at convocation. In some cases, this is attributed to our cooperative education opportunities. In other cases, our reputation for creating day one ready graduates. With 97.7% of our grads finding a career in their field within two years of graduation, you can be rest assured that you will be well prepared for your future and future career with graduates from this faculty in, in particular having 100% employment rate post-graduation. So tonight we are going to focus on our outdoor, rec our outdoor recreation parks and tourism program, which is connected to our Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities. And Lakehead is Canada's number one smaller university for social sciences and humanities. Lakehead's Outdoor Recreation Parks and Tourism Program is a one-of-a-kind program in Canada. Lakehead offers you a unique integration of theoretical and applied perspectives related to the study of outdoor recreation and leisure pursuits in natural environments. Outdoor recreation is playing an increasingly important role in our contemporary lives. It contributes to health and fitness, friendship, personal reflection, enrichment of culture, and appreciation of our natural environments, and is a key element in economic development and environmental protection. So at this time, without further ado, we are going to turn the webinar over to Julie uh, for this program. All right, thanks so much, Erin. So we're really excited to share a whole lot of information about our program with you. Um, but what we wanted to do before we even get talking is give you a sense of what it's like to be in our program. And the best way we thought about doing that was to share a video that shows some of our in-class and in the field kinds of experiences. So Erin's gonna load up that video by sharing her screen in a different way. Um, and this video has been made by a second year student in ORPT. And they accompanied us on a lot of field experiences in order to get the footage. And it's, we're really proud of this video and thought it really gives a good sense of what it's like to be in our program. most about living in Thunder Bay is the amount of outdoor opportunities that we have. No matter where you turn, you have an opportunity to be outside and explore. Someone told me that uh, you should find something you love and then learn how to get paid for it. So this was the perfect opportunity to find that. Hey 
Great, thanks, Aaron. We'll continue on with the next slide. And one thing that we want really we wanted to share about what makes the School of Outdoor Recreation, Parks and Tourism uh, unique in Canada is that it's one of the longest running program of program, or it is the longest running program of its kind in Canada. And over 40 years ago was when the program started. And we've got about, we've got over four decades of experience Experience producing some of Canada's best and most qualified outdoor leaders. Uh, the program over the past four decades has consistently evolved to really adapt to the changes in technology, societal needs, and even changes in the trends of the industry. One thing that makes this, our program unique also is how broad the subject areas that we cover in the outdoor recreation, parks and tourism field are covering. So we ex include topics around outdoor leadership, risk management, experiential education, tourism entrepreneurship, parks management, nature-based therapeutic recreation. And all of these subjects are, are, they're rooted in a common tie of the outdoors. What everybody who comes to our program is really passionate about is the outdoors. And so as long as you have an interest in the outdoors, you're in the right place. Along the way, you'll discover all of these different pathways that you could take in the outdoor industry, uh, which will actually be one of our, our slides later on in this presentation where we talk about the different kinds of careers that graduates of our program end up having. Um, so we really like to have a balance of theory and practice in our classes. And if we carry on to the next slide, another thing that makes our program unique is the breadth of program options. So we have a number of different program options in outdoor recreation, parks and tourism. You'll see that about one third of our students, so that's the red chunk of the pie, take the Honours Bachelor of Outdoor Recreation. So that's a four-year degree, and that's the single degree option. Um, what's nice about that, if that's one of the options that you chose to apply for, is that it gives you a lot of space in your course selections to have electives in a number of different disciplines in addition to your focus in outdoor recreation. So if you're interested in dabbling in music, or if you really have a passionate and a passion about English literature or you want to take French, you can have room in your schedule to really explore all of those other subjects that are of interest to you. Um, another third of our program applicants tend to focus on concurrent education, and that can be either specializing in the primary junior or the intermediate senior age groups. Um, and so what's nice about that program is that you get to, to study outdoor recreation as your primary degree, um, and then you have an automatic acceptance into the two-year professional education program. Um, so that's a, that's a very popular uh, program option for, for people who want to be outdoor educators or um, combine their passion for the outdoors in a way that teaches others in the future. We also have a number of double degree options that uh, give you two degrees. One is in, uh, for example, outdoor recreation and geography. Another could be outdoor recreation and history. You could also have a double degree with gender and women's studies, or even get a Bachelor of the Science in addition to your outdoor recreation degree um, if you uh, focus on the natural science. Uh, double major. So what's really nice, there's a lot of interest in students having um, a double degree because you get to have two certificates basically after four years for those double degree options. Uh, for the concurrent education, that is a six-year program. So you do the, the Honours Bachelor of Outdoor Recreation in four years, and then you have two years of your professional certification as a teacher afterwards. We also have a program option called the Concentration in nature-based therapeutic recreation. We have a slide specifically for that, um, which is next, because the program is really quite specialized in the sense that you can take your honors bachelor of outdoor recreation and um, 
sorry, the, the slide is still frozen on my screen. I'm not sure if it's advanced the next one. There we go. Um, so a lot of people recognize that the outdoors is a really great place to find healing and wellness. And so some folks are interested in being uh, therapeutic recreation pro um, providers. And so they may be interested in pursuing the concentration in nature-based therapeutic recreation. So students who take this option have a lot of the same courses as the other students who take outdoor recreation uh, parks and tourism, but there's a few core courses that are, are additional requirements. Um, one is a course in specialized and inclusive therapeutic recreation, and that's about it designing outdoor recreation opportunities in a way that um, allows everyone to participate. It tries to identify and overcome the barriers that might exclude other populations from participating and finding ways to make that an opportunity for everyone to enjoy. And there's also a fourth year course in adventure therapy, and then another fourth year course that really exposes students to the standards of practice in therapeutic recreation. So students with that concentration take those particular courses in addition to others in outdoor recreation, but there's also a few required courses in um, psychology as well as an anatomy course so they have a, a good sense of um, both the physical and psychological aspects of using nature for wellness and healing. We advance to the next slide. Then one of the things we really wanted to talk about is why study outdoor recreation in Thunder Bay. So the outdoor recreation parks and tourism program is only available on the Thunder Bay campus of Lakehead University. Um, and we wanted to share each of our favorite places about Thunder Bay. Um, one of the things that is uh, I guess a, a characteristic of our program is that most of our students are not from Thunder Bay. So Sam is actually a bit of an anomaly in our program in that more than 90% of our students are actually not from Thunder Bay. Um, and so many have actually never been here. And so what we wanted to do is really tell you a little bit about what makes Thunder Bay such a fantastic place if you are someone who's passionate about the outdoors. So I'll let Sam talk first since she's a longtime resident of the area, then we'll go to Abby and then I'll share a little bit of what I like about Thunder Bay. Yeah, so um, my favorite location in Thunder Bay is actually about 45 minutes south. Um, it is uh, Pigeon River Provincial Park. Um, Basically the reason why I love it so much is there's such a huge diversity in um, landscape that you get there. So there's um, waterfalls, there's deep forest all within kind of like, I think it's about 30 to 45 minutes of hiking. Um, you're really able to um, see what kind of, um, yeah, just diverse landscapes that you can find in the Boreal Forest. Um, but yeah, it's right at the border of um, uh, Ontario and Minnesota. Thanks, Sam. Abby, tell us about your favorite place in Thunder Bay or in the Thunder Bay area for recreation. Um, my favorite place in the Thunder Bay area, area is the Cascades. Um, so at the Cascades Conservation Area, there is a few trails that you can take that will lead you to the Cascades. And I just find like it's not that far from campus or from like out of town either. So like it's a great place to go to like rewind and kind of get away from schoolwork for a bit and give your brain a little break. So yeah, that's why I like it. Thanks, Abby. What's really great is, is Thunder Bay is, is a place where you can find nature right in the city uh, even right on our campus we've got a small pond well I mean we yeah we've got a bit of a reservoir there's a river that goes through a campus there's a forested area um, and so you can find nature as a place to be uh, right on campus and we also have a lot of natural areas within walking distance in the city the natural areas that you can bus to and even within short driving distance we've got really incredible trails we've got thousands of lakes, we've got incredible rivers, we've got cliffs for climbing, we've got downhill skiing in the area, just like such a wide range of um, places in which you can actually do the things that you're passionate about. If you're obviously passionate about outdoor recreation, this is a place to be. Um, one of the places that I really like is Sleeping Giant Provincial Park, and you can see it in the, in the image here that you're 
um, viewing on your screen. Um, and so it's one of the provincial parks in this area. We use Sleeping Giant Provincial Park for some of our field-based uh, teaching. Um, every year there's a loppet, so that's a, a ski race, and there's about 700 or 800 people that go there to go on the cross-country ski trails. Often we have opportunities for our students to volunteer for that event. Um, so really, if you like winter recreation, this year has been incredible for the amount of snowfall we've had. Um, and, you know, a really great place if you like the outdoors, summer or winter, because there's lots of things that you can do, um, and lots of places you can go. carry on to the next slide now. What we wanted to do is then also give you a sense of what it's like for the you know, we can't describe every course um, because that would take too long. We'd be here all day. Um, but we wanted to give you a sense of what first year courses are like in the program. So I'll talk about land relations. Um, so it's a course that you would take as your first semester or in your first semester of first year. And Really the emphasis of that course is about connecting with the landscape. So we really, you know, we're all really passionate about doing outdoor recreation, but it's important in terms of our practice in the field is that we have a, a really deep connection with the places that we recreate in. And because so many of our students are not from the Thunder Bay area, we really wanna make it, um, to foster an appreciation of both the cultural and the natural assets um, and history of this area. And so the Thunder Bay area is part of the Robinson Superior Treaty, and um, it's the original homeland of the Anishinaabek people of the Fort William First Nation. Um, so it's really important for our students to really have an understanding of what that means. And uh, we do tend to have uh, exposure to Indigenous teachings and an understanding of the cultural significance of the landscape in this area. We also learn about the birds, the plants, the water, the geology, and this course actually involves a fair number of field trips to local areas in the, in the Thunder Bay region so that you can get a sense of what the boreal forest is all about, get an appreciation for Lake Superior, and all of that then starts to shape how we interact with the landscape moving forward and how we try to build a sense of stewardship and respect when we're recreating in these landscapes. So land relations is a really wonderful place to get to, a, a wonderful course in able to uh, get an appreciation of the natural and cultural assets of the area. And next, Sam is going to talk about Outdoor Skills in Theory 1. So um, Outdoor Skills in Theory 1 is your first field-based course that you will have um, in your first semester of Outdoor Rec. Um, this is where, because everyone is coming from a different place, some people have a lot of experience with guiding um, or summer camps. Some people just really love being in the outdoors and want to learn all about it. Um, so Outdoor Skills in Theory, or we call it OSAT, um, is a really good way for everyone to get onto the same level of skill. Um, with this class as well, we have our options for trips. Um, there is the um, three-day uh, canoe trip, which is, I believe it's at Onion Lake, um, and then the three-day hiking trip, which is at Sleeping Giant Provincial Park. You'll have the opportunity to do all of the planning for the trip, as well as the execution. Um, and it ends with a really fun kind of like cook-off, um, where all the students are able to um, create their favorite camp meals. Um, and it's a really fun day at the end of the semester for everyone to just debrief um, around the fire on campus. Yeah, so both of those courses are offered in the fall term, and there's a lecture associated with those courses as well as a field component. So, um, you know, on a regular basis, you're going out to these different locations and um, meeting people and you're sharing a bus and you're in small groups and working together. So even if you don't know anybody else in the program within, you know, a couple of weeks, you're going to actually have uh, good connections with the people in class. It's not like you're sitting in a huge lecture theater with, you know, all these strangers around you you're working and interacting with your, your, your group mates right away, immediately starting the first semester. 
Um, in the second semester, there are two courses. One of them is uh, Foundations in Outdoor Recreation and the other is Group Dynamics. In addition to those four courses, uh, you'll be taking uh, a first year English class as well as some other courses that might be part of your double degree options or your uh, concentration program. Um, I'll be talking a bit about Foundations. Uh, foundations is a course that really sets you up for success for the rest of the program. So it introduces you to some of the major concepts and theories that we talk about in outdoor recreation, parks and tourism. It connects you with the library and how to use the literature, how to, um, you know, put together a, a research paper. Um, and it, it really establishes the skills and the knowledge that you really that you would build on in the subsequent courses and years of your program. Um, and Abby's going to talk about group dynamics, which is uh, the fourth of the required courses in first year for ORPT students. Yes, yeah, so group dynamics is a very important course and it's like the foundation of um, working in groups. Um, but it's something that you'll take with you throughout your four years and beyond. And so um, within the course, you'll learn about how important effective communication is, what is effective communication, um, what an effective group looks like. You'll learn about the different types of leadership skills, how to um, like create an effective group, and also the phases of group development. And if you're lucky, when you're in the course, you may experience the different phases of group de development um, with the group work that you do. Um, another thing is that many Wreckers, like many current Wreckers, but also future alumni speak very highly of this course. And they say how much it has helped them um, gain jobs um, once they graduate, but also um, in the group work that they do because you are constantly in groups in um, outdoor recreation. And so it's good to know what you what your weaknesses are and your strengths are in groups. Um, so this course was very helpful and you'll use it throughout your years. <laughs> Great, thanks so much, Abby. And I think, Abby, you're, you're next up too, talking about our different learning environments. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, so we do have different learning environments. Um, so in outdoor recreation, we take advantage of um, outdoor learning opportunities, but we also do a lot of things in class, which is important to highlight that not everything we do is outside. Um, but basically, so for some courses, you will learn about different theories and skills and practices in a lecture hall, and then later on, either in a lab or for the next class, you'll actually get to go and practice the theories um, and skills and test them out. And you usually do that like outside in an outdoor learning environment. Um, and, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> um, we also use experiential education practices in both in-class and outdoor environments. And next slide. Thanks, Abby. Um, and when Abby talks about labs, you might be envisioning, you know, like wearing a lab coat and having test tubes and things like that. That's not really what we talk about in terms of a lab in outdoor recreation parks and tourism. So often when there's a lab attached to a course, that means that's that's really where we're um, having a lot of focus on experiential education. So we'll have our lectures and oftentimes they will be interactive, um, but we do really emphasize and try to give us give ourselves time to practice those skills um, experientially. So a lab might be a three hour period where you're working on group dynamics and you're, you know, developing a movie together. And at the same time, you're learning about group dynamics. Um, but then we're, there's also labs that are these field trips, like Sam was saying about OSAT, Outdoor Skills in Theory One, where you're actually your lab session is a weekend trip to hike at Sleeping Giant Provincial Park. So um, just be aware when we say lab that that's not, you know, a test tube and lab coat kind of thing. That's a, where we do our experiential education opportunities. Um, and speaking of the kinds of equipment and things that we would be using in a lab, uh, Sam's going to talk about the kinds of equipment that you'll need to bring with you and what kinds of equipment are available through the program. 
Yeah, so it could be really overwhelming trying to decide what to bring um, to Thunder Bay since a lot of people are not from the area. Um, we do ask that you do have um, this really short list of equipment um, that'll be kind of like your bare bones. Um, so sunglasses, um, a Fox 40 whistle, rain gear, so a rain jacket and rain pants. A compass. Compasses will also be available uh, through the bookstore and is one of your essential kind of like textbooks that you take out for um, OSAT 1. Uh, good hiking boots or hiking shoes and a day pack, probably nothing bigger than like 20 to 30 liters. Um, if you do have other equipment that you do wish to bring to have your own personal equipment, you are more than welcome to do so. If you don't have any other equipment um, or can't afford to purchase any equipment, um, we do have our gear depot, which is within walking distance from campus. Um, all gear um, for courses that are required for the course um, will be free to rent. Um, if you do want to rent out some gear for some personal use, say in the winter you want to try out some of our snowshoes or skis um, and it's not required for a course, you are still able to take them out. Um, there is a very small reasonable and affordable fee um, that goes with that as well. Um, and the depot is always updating their gear. Um, Though some of it can be outdated, um, there is a lot more gear coming into the depot that is really appreciated. Um, and we do also have a um, video that was made, I believe this year um, from the depot, um, just to kind of show you what is available to you and um, talk about the program in general. Thanks, Sam. So we'll just transition to that video. And like when we talk about the depot, it's, it's kind of like a library, but instead of books, you're renting or borrowing the outdoor equipment. So it's really nice that you don't have to take a full trailer of gear with you when you come up here. We've got a whole depot uh, equipment room full of uh, outdoor gear that for your use. So let's, let's see and take a look at what the depot is all about. <laughs> Hi, my name is Colleen Hutchison. I'm a fourth year student in the ORPT program. I work at the Equipment Depot. The Equipment Depot is a gear lab for students to rent gear ranging from water-based sports to winter activities. In various ORPT classes, you can borrow gear from the depot to help aid you in outdoor adventures or trips. Uh, that can range from sleeping pads to tents to cooking equipment to snowshoes. We have everything that you need. Great. So that gives you a little bit of a behind the scenes look at the Outdoor Recreation Gear Depot. And um, what's really also nice is if you wanted to try different types of outdoor equipment, um, it, you, you can check it out before you actually purchase your own. So if you wanted to try it out, water purification system, you can try a few different options that we have in the depot, decide which one's the best one for you, um, and then de determine which one you might want to invest in. Uh, but as Sam was saying, we really want to encourage you to get out and appreciate the outdoors, do the kinds of outdoor recreation things that really uh, get you moving and, and excited about being here. And so by facilitating that by offering a reasonable rental rate uh, for the outdoor equipment, then that's really a really great way to uh, promote that kind of access. But for any course use, so any equipment that you need for your courses itself, uh, there's no charge to use it from the depot. All right. And we also wanted to give a sense of what it's like outside of our classes, because certainly being an outdoor recreation student and studying at Lakehead University, there's a lot of really great things that go on in our courses, but there's a lot of great other things that go on in the extracurricular uh, side of things. So Sam's going to tell us a little bit about the Outdoor Recreation Student Society. Yeah, um, so the Outdoor Recreation Student Society, or um, ORSIS, um, we are a group of eight students who are elected um, every year by the ORPT student body. Um, we put on different social events. Uh, we put out our Quincy Quarterly, which is our 
um, quarterly magazine uh, that is all student articles that you can either submit through classes or uh, to our information coordinator um, throughout the year. Also something very important that ORSIS does is we do provide a lot of opportunities for you to have um, different certifications. So we usually put on a standard first aid course every year, as well as a wilderness advanced first aid and wilderness first responder. Um, we also are able to put on other courses. Uh, we have historically put on um, bronze cross, bronze medall medallion and LSF as well as um, mental health first aid. So we do really want to work with the students to do things that the students really want to do. Uh, throughout the year, we have different film fests. Uh, we put on a ski day sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's just a really good way to create our own community within ORPT, um, as well as kind of strengthen the bonds within the department. Mm. And Sam, can you tell us a little bit about the development fund? Yeah, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, we do have the development fund, um, which is, so when you go into ORPT, you do have, I believe it's $45 of dues that goes towards the program. Um, over half of that goes towards our development fund, which you are able to apply to essentially a grant. Um, you go through a whole proposal process for that. Um, so say you want to do your wilderness first responder course, it usually goes out for about $1,500. Um, you are able to apply for the development fund through ORSIS um, and you will have about a third to a half of it um, paid for by um, ORSIS um, because you are paying into that. Um, but yeah. I think that kind of covers it, but yeah. I can I can share an example too from a student who was in one of my classes. He was really interested in attending the Association for Experiential Education conference, and it was in Montreal. And you know, getting there, the travel and the conference fees were a little bit beyond his means. So he applied to the ORSIS Development Fund to help support his participation in the conference, and he he got one third of his costs covered. And in return, so it's kind of like an exchange type thing. So they'll support you financially for some of the professional development um, or uh, sort of career development types of things that you want to do. And in return, they're expecting a little bit of a give back. So he ended up doing a presentation about one of the sessions uh, that he attended at that conference. And he actually sort of brought the conference back to a RPT and shared that session with the students. We've had, so a lot of actually students have taken part in conferences that way. Uh, some have actually planned uh, personal expeditions that they were involved in that had support through this grant. Um, so by paying into the uh, Outdoor Recreation Student Society fee, um, there's actually potential for a lot of return from uh, it, on that investment basically in terms of applying to that fund. So it's a really great resource. Um, the other thing I wanted to sort of strengthen and, and encourage, um, or I guess support and, and agree with is Sam's statement that uh, there's a really great uh, structure, I guess, with the Outdoor Recreation Student Society. And we work really closely with the Student Society and the faculty. So Sam, as the president of the Student Society, gets to come to all of our faculty meetings. Sam regularly introduces and, and shares what the Student Society is all up to. And because she attends our meetings, she can convey back to the students what some of the, you know, the current decision making and, and priorities are of the faculty. So there's really a strong connection between the student society and the faculty and making sure that student concerns are heard and that the fact or that the students are always aware of, of sort of what's coming up in terms of the faculty. So we really like that open sense of communication with the student society. And part of that is uh, sort of building into our next slide that talks about a sense of community in our program. So one of the things that we wanted to share with you is that uh, coming to Outdoor Rec, it's not like you're just you know, joining a program, you go to your classes, 
you do your homework and that's it. You're really becoming a part of this family. And our what we call this family is, you know, not only students and, and faculty currently, but there's also a whole lot of alumni who are still really proud of their experience in outdoor recreation, parks and tourism. Many of our alumni end up hiring students who are currently in the program. And there's this community of current people involved in the program, but there's a whole history of people who have been involved in the program one way or another, that's all part of this active community. Um, so Annie or Abby and uh, Sam each have <laughs> a, a bit of a, their personal take on what it's like to be a part of our ORPT community. Let's start with Abby this time and then we'll go to Sam. Okay, um, so what makes me feel part of the ORPT community is how everyone is approachable and welcoming with open arms. So you can go to a prof and ask for help and they'll help you usually right away. Um, and it just makes you feel like you're included and that you belong in the program. And it's really important because a lot of big courses aren't like that. Um, I went from being in mathematics to here. And so I've experienced both and it was very difficult in math to feel like you belonged um, in that group. There wasn't a big sense of community. So to go to, to go for a program that didn't have that and the one that did made a huge difference in my schooling personally. And yeah. Thanks, Abby. Um, for me, I would say that just the whole sense of camaraderie that there is throughout um, all of the different year levels in the program, as well as with faculty, there are a lot of students who take classes within different years. Um, so there's some like second years and third year classes or in first year classes. So it really allows everyone to um, kind of get to know each other. Um, being able to walk through the rec hall and recognize everyone and know most people on like a first name basis and have faculty know you on a first name basis um, really helps with kind of like that sense of belonging in the program and is something that makes outdoor rec something that's very unique um, from a Lakehead perspective as well as across different um, outdoor rec programs across the country. Mm -hmm. And it's that, that community that really makes teaching in the program just so wonderful. I look forward to going to my classes because we have a lot of discussions and students aren't afraid to speak up because they are feeling comfortable as part of this big family and they all have their perspectives that they should share and you know, oftentimes I'm learning from my students just as much, if not more, than they're learning from me. So we really see each other as um, really contributing to one another's growth, uh, no matter who you are in the program. And speaking of this sort of broader community, I just wanted to carry on to the next slide now. Um, that talks about that extended community, the extended community of outdoor recreation, parks and tourism alumni. And one of the questions that we often get is that, what, what can I do with an outdoor recreation degree? Um, I know my mom asked me that question when I signed up for the program. And to be honest, when I came into the program, I actually didn't really know. I knew I was kind of, you know, I love the outdoors. I really loved experiential education. And so I was confident that it was a program for me, but I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do with my degree. I never thought that I had end up back in the program teaching. Um, but there's, there's a wide range of careers that people can end up with um, in our, you know, as a result of our program. So there's folks who um, have a specialization in outdoor recreation and they end up becoming recreation therapists they might work in municipal parks and recreation programs, um, sort of managing the, the offerings at the city or, or municipal level. A lot of our, um, our program participants end up being, well, actually, a lot of people come from a summer camp uh, to our program because they love that kind of way of working with people in the outdoors, working with youth. And so a lot of students end up working their way through the ranks in summer camps, becoming summer camp directors. A lot of our students are interested in sharing their passion for the outdoors as educators. So, um, you know, we saw that about one third of our students are also taking concurrent education. So many do end up being classroom teachers. 
some decide that they wanted to be uh, educators in the outdoors in some other way, not in the formal schooling system. So often we have students who end up becoming teachers in the Waldorf or Montessori or forest school systems. Um, others are employed in outdoors, uh, outdoor education centers. We also have a lot of student who, students who never thought about parks as a career, but then they get exposed to the parks classes that we teach and they decide to go in that direction. So we have a lot of alumni who are superintendents of provincial parks or they're involved as uh, interpreters in the national park system. Many are conservation specialists who do ecological restoration work or ecological education in the park system. And then others become uh, interested in the tourism side of the outdoor recreation parks and tourism degree. So some end up being tourism advisors, they do tourism development on the community level. Others become entrepreneurs and they run their own tourism business. And this, in this photo that we're seeing on the screen is uh, one of our alumni who actually graduated in the same year as me, who runs his own dog sled business. Um, and oftentimes we actually take advantage of his business as one of our elective options for the winter outdoor skills and theory classes. So if you're inter interested in trying out dog sledding, you would have a chance to do that in your second year. Um, others become wilderness guides and they, uh, you know, they have their own businesses or they work for larger uh, operations that offer um, guiding opportunities. Sometimes this is like within Canada, but we also have a lot of people who've ended up inter national in terms of offering outdoor and wilderness experiences. So there's that's, a, that's just a snippet of the wide range of careers that people end up with in outdoor recreation, parks and tourism. And the common thread is just this passion for the outdoors and a, a love to and willingness to share that with others. And I'd say that that was really what unites us all and makes us such a strong community because we have something in common right from the beginning. And that's that passion for the outdoors. So that that is uh, so all the formalized uh, information that we wanted to share with you. And I'll just pass it back to Aaron to uh, facilitate how we're gonna be taking the questions and answers and what's next. Really. So there's also some ways to stay connected with the outdoor recreation parks and tourism programs they have provided their Instagram, their Facebook as well. So definitely give them a follow and see what they're up to while they're in the program. and. While they're exploring different parts of the program as well, look back on previous posts to get an idea of different excursions that students have been on or different, uh, different courses that are a part of the program as well. So definitely recommend giving them a follow if you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook, just to kind of keep up to date and see what the program is all about. So as Julie mentioned, however, we are going to open it up to questions. So it doesn't look like any questions that had come along uh, or come through along the way, but for anyone who did attend a little bit later or pop in a little bit later to this webinar, how you can ask questions is down on the bottom, there is a Q&A and chat function. So that would be the best way to ask a question just because your mics are muted, so you don't have that ability to ask any questions, but uh, either the Q&A or the chat function is the best option. So while we wait for some questions to come in, maybe I'll ask Sam and Abby, um, through your program, what has been the most memorable moment that has stood out to you the most while you've taken your courses or been on excursions? And maybe we'll start with Sam, just because you're first on my screen there. Sure. Um, I think for me, um, so in your, uh, between your third and your fourth year, you take a course called um, uh, oh my gosh, what's it called? Expedition management. Um, yeah, so there are two parts of it. One is you do the planning part. The second part, you are actually going on this expedition. Um, so for mine, um, we did kind of have to adapt um, because of COVID. So instead of doing a 14 day sailing trip, we did um, five day trips of sailing. And then the following week, we, following week, we did um, some mountain, sorry, uh, yeah, road biking, uh, flat water and white water canoeing, um, and really just being able to um, spend two weeks with um, a really small group of students um, learning or learning things that were totally new to all of us. Um, I know a lot of us have grown a new love for sailing. Um, and the six of us um, that were on these trips together are still really close to this day. 
Awesome. And then I'll pass it on to Abby for your most memorable moment in the program so far. Um, it's kind of hard. Um, I think my most memorable moment was working with Julie on a directive study. Um, so a directive study is when you basically choose what you want to do or what you want to study. So it's something that's not offered in a regular course. And so for me, um, my roommate and I made a program in one of Julie's classes and Julie proposed to us an idea to make it, to make it into like our dream into reality. <laughs> and so we did it and it's happening this summer. So I think that was a big, um, memorable moment for me. And a big thumbs up to Abby and her, uh, partner in crime Annie they uh, they applied for the very first research or very first project grant and they were successful in getting support to run their program so uh, it was really exciting and and it's you know it's gonna run this summer so they're going to be spending their entire uh, uh, summer on an island uh, where there's a lighthouse and they're going to have uh, young young women take part in their program as sort of like a, a week-long camp to learn uh, trade skills and camping skills while spending an entire week on this really amazing island. So it's pretty cool that they were able to design this program and uh, actually get a credit to, to make it happen in real life. And that's one of the things that we really like to do in Outdoor Rec is if you have an interest, we want to encourage you to really build on that interest. And um, if we can find ways to support you in that, we can do that. And so in, in Abby's case, it was uh, through a direct study. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, Sam and Abby. Uh, we did actually have a question come in. So uh, someone in the audience is just wondering, what kind of volunteer opportunities are there in the outdoor community in Thunder Bay? Okay. That's a really good question. And I think I would really encourage a lot of students to volunteer and get in, involved in the outdoor industry, because as you're learning the theories and the concepts in the classes, if you can relate that to an experience that you're doing as a volunteer or an experience that you've had as an employee at a summer camp or um, you know in a park system then it just makes it that much more concrete and tangible and it makes that click so that's a really great question of, of how can you get involved in the outdoor um, industry in this area so one thing that I would recommend is there's actually a database called 211north.ca and it's like it's like the phone book of all of the organizations that serve Northern Ontario. And so if you're interested in working with youth, then you can cite, type up youth and they'll, it'll pop up all of the organizations that offer programs to youth. If you're interested in gaining experience working with older adults, you can also type up that population and find organizations that work with those, with those populations. Or if you're interested in a particular subject area, so if you're interested in like learning more about sailing, there's a yacht club, or if you're interested in dog sledding, we have a lot of our students end up actually volunteering with Paul, who, who was featured on the slide earlier, um, to run that dog sled opportunities. So um, there's a lot of ways to get involved. And as soon as you're here, if you have, if you have a particular interest, you can talk to to either some of the, the current students or you can talk to your professors and say, hey, I'm interested in find out, you know, who's offering sailing experiences and can I be a part of volunteering with that organization or who, what organization um, offers programming for youth with uh, developmental disabilities and we could connect you with some agencies that work with that population so certainly there's lots of volunteer opportunities as well as on campus we have lots of clubs and there are usually uh, volunteer showcase days I'm not sure if, uh, if that's currently running but in the past there have certainly been uh, opportunities for agencies in the area to showcase and students can go and visit those booths and find out what what's available Something to add to that is kind of like Outdoor Rec at Lakehead specific um, is that there is a huge network in town of students and alumni who own businesses. Um, 
a lot of alumni ended up staying in Thunder Bay. So for example, like Julie was saying, a lot of students do volunteer with um, Paul who um, owns the dog sledding business, um, as well as there are a few other businesses in town, um, like Such Nice Day Adventures who um, does sea kayaking. Um, I know I'm personally going to be working with um, Naturally Literate, um, which is a program in town that does um, uh, kind of like speech therapy for um, neurodivergent kids using experiential education. Um, and there's also a lot of other alumni who are really looking to have students in ORPT use those skills that they've learned. Um, and they have all stayed close to the program. So even just talking with faculty um, who may have these close relationships with these alumni, um, you'll be able to find some really good opportunities. Mm. And I see, Amy, you, you added to the chat that you're interested in the Jackrabbits program. So cross-country skiing, there's two uh, Nordic skiing clubs in Thunder Bay. One is actually in my backyard. <laughs> so the Lappy Nordic Ski Center um, just got a huge snowfall. So if you're interested in skiing, you can start in October and still ski in April. Um, and so they definitely have Jackrabbit programs. They have um, similar programs at the Canview uh, Nordic Ski Center and also you might have seen there's a slide a few slides ago with a whole bunch of people that said like had orange vests that said volunteer. Um, that Lappy, or excuse me, the Sleeping Giant Loppet we have in our first year, uh, we have ha usually had our students volunteer with offering this major program and we've had, you know, people at the, um, doing the timing stations and at the hot chocolate booth and stuff like that so lots of ways to certainly get involved in the Nordic skiing uh, atmosphere in this area. Awesome. Thank you for your answers. I do have another question uh, that did come in and I think this is more uh, towards Abby. The question is, what was the transition like from Southern Ontario to Thunder Bay? Um, that's a good question. Um, for me, I didn't really have like a problem with being away from home. So like moving away from home like I didn't get homesick so that wasn't an issue for me the transition was fairly easy um but I will say the weather is a bit of a transition it does get colder in Thunder Bay um more quicker than in southern Ontario so that was a definitely one of the biggest transitions I think um but I think like within the first month you will make friends and the more friends you make, the easier it is to um, move from, like the easier it is to move so such far, like far away from home, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I didn't think the transition was that bad, so. <laughs> A lot of students, once they leave our program, consider Thunder Bay their second home. You know, and they almost, they, they feel like they get homesick for Thunder Bay um, once they've maybe returned back to their original home or moved on to some other place where they're starting their careers. Uh, so it's a place that, um, has a whole bunch of hidden gems. Uh, it, it takes a while to get to know Thunder Bay, but once you're here and really take the time to discover the, the city and the natural surroundings, um, it really is an incredible place that, that not very many people know that much about. Um, it's almost like we kind of like that secret <laughs> in a sense that we don't have, you know, our, our natural areas aren't overwhelmed with people. You're not really fighting on the trail to get a place. Um, it really is much more of a wilderness experience than you would have in the natural areas in southern Ontario. So if you like the outdoors and uh, you don't really like all that many crowds, uh, this is the place for you. The other thing too is that um, we have an international airport in Thunder Bay and getting back to southern Ontario is quite um, straightforward. Uh, you know, you actually, it's only maybe a 10, 15 minute drive to get to the airport. Uh, once you're on the plane, you're back in Toronto or wherever it happens to be in Southern Ontario uh, within you know, a couple hours. So it's, it is a long drive to get here. It's a great drive if you're into adventure um, and there's lots of national and provincial parks along the way. Um, but at the same time, if you need to get back and forth quickly, we do have both a fall and a winter reading week. So there is a chance to go back home and you know, connect back with your family and friends back home at least once per semester and uh, and getting there by plane isn't too difficult since we have the airport right close by and it's not a crowded airport it's it's pretty easy to find your way through awesome thank you 
So it looks like we have one more question here, uh, just from uh, our audience member who posted in the chat. Um, they're just looking for contact information if they have other questions. Oh. Oh. I'm not sure if you're comfortable if I just share or have uh, Josh there share your email into the chat or I see you're kind of trying to type there. Um, this one, that's our generic ORPT at lakeheadu.ca. So if you just had a general question, you weren't sure who to ask it, uh, that will go to our administrative assistant who can direct it onwards. Um, but if you wanted to contact me, certainly contact me anytime. And if you have a question for our student society or rep representatives, um, or if you've wanted to follow up with Abby, I can always uh, get a hold, hold of her. Oh yeah, and super thanks Sam for sharing the um, Outdoor Recreation Student Society email address. So there's lots of ways to get a hold of us for sure. And definitely follow us on our social medias um, because there's lots of, we post all sorts of things, um, you know, getting a sense of the inside experience in ORPT. So you can also find us that way. Perfect. Thank you. I saw it was just the, the Outdoor Rec Student Society one was just hosts or pasted to hosts and panelists. So I just shared it to everyone just so to make sure that everyone had it. So I just wanna be aware of time. I just saw that it was five o'clock. So if anyone does have any questions, um, we can have some time at the end, uh, but I just have a few more slides to work through here before uh, the end of our webinar. So you're probably wondering now what your next steps are, learning about the program. Maybe you've applied to our program. Maybe you're looking to apply. You have an offer, you're looking to accept. So we just wanna provide some more information for you. So we do have some important dates coming up. Um, so entrance bursaries, there's a deadline of April 15th. We have a president scholarship application deadline coming up this month as well. Your deadline to accept an offer of admission isn't until June 1st, but that is also the first day that you are the deadline for paying your confirmation deposit as well. So June 1st may seem a little bit of a ways away, but it is definitely creeping up very quickly. So it does come up quick mark all of these dates in your calendar. We do also have more entrance bursaries deadlines on June 30th as well. We do also have applicant receptions coming up. So we have in-person and virtual applicant receptions. You can join us on our campuses for an in-person uh, campus tour um, or part of our applicant reception. You can learn about what your next steps are, how to accept the offer as well. We have this happening at our Aurelia campus and our Thunder Bay campus. So even if you are attending our Thunder Bay campus, you can still attend at our Aurelia campus and get to know some information through the formal presentations that they have going on as well. We are also running in-person campus tours. So you're able to book a campus tour. So for this program specifically, you're probably not looking at the Aurelia campus, but you'd be looking at our Thunder Bay campus. And we are happy to welcome you onto our campus, show you all of the ins and outs of our campus, athletics, residents, as well as the wing of the Outdoor Recreation Parks and Tourism Program and different student supports and services that are on campus as well. Or if you also wanted to meet with Julie, we can also arrange that through our campus tour programs as well. So you can find out more information on lakeheadu.ca slash tours, and you're able to book a time that works best for you. We have a few dates and times available throughout the week um, that you're able to kind of fit into your schedule as well. You can also book a virtual meeting with someone from our recruitment team. So if you have more questions about how to apply, what your, uh, what your first year might look like, we're able to provide some information if you have questions about different student supports on campus, different bursaries and scholarships, we are happy to provide information to you. So you can go to lakeheadu.ca slash admissions slash events, hashtag coffee, or you can also go to lakeheadu.ca slash upcoming and that'll give our upcoming events page for you to be able to book that meeting with us. You can also give us a call as well. That is our toll-free number. You can also reach us through email at recruit at lakeheadu.ca. And that concludes our presentation, our webinar this evening. So we invite you to open your world to an exceptional education offered in unconventional ways. We look forward to you joining with, joining with us as you take your next steps in adventure and especially in the outdoor recreation parks and tourism program you are guaranteed an adventure through the program so thank you for taking the time to join us today and we look forward to connecting with you again soon so i did see that there were some chats that did and i'm just going to see if they were questions before we 
conclude our webinar here. So there is one question. Can you tell me when the first semester starts and ends the second semester as well? So our first semester, I don't know if there's, if Julie wants to comment if there's field school or anything like that at the beginning or if there's a regular start to it. Perfect. So I believe the first day of classes is September 6th, around there is usually the first day. Uh, classes go until about the first week of December and then there's exams just before Christmas. Um, Josh did just post it. We host in Palace, so I'm just going to send that in the chat. Um, so that is a outline of different important dates. So usually September 6th, if you have exams within December, your classes go until about the first week of December, and then classes start up again in January, go to about the first week of April, and then you have exams until about the end of April. So this month, I believe the last exam day is the 24th. There's a kind of a contingency date on the 25th, but that's just in case something happens to any one of the other dates. So you're usually done about end of April. And then as I was saying, there's a week in each semester. So around in the same week as Thanksgiving Monday, um, that's when we have our fall reading week. And then the same week as family day, we have a winter reading, reading break. And that's usually about uh, halfway through the semester. So it's a nice, nice pause uh, to sort of readjust and take a break and then start up back to the second half of the term nice and fresh. And then during the reading weeks as well, this is when typically when the exam schedule for the end of the semester is posted. So that's when you know that you'll be doing your, knowing when you'll be doing your um, in-class exams. Great. So it doesn't look like we had any other questions come in here. Um, so I want to thank Sam, Abby, and of course, Julie for joining us today and telling us more about the Outdoor Recreation Parks and Tourism Program and also offering us that current student experience to be able to, to share your experiences in the program with all of our future students joining us today. Thanks so much for having us and thanks everyone for showing up and uh, attending our, our webinar or watching it on uh, the recording. We really appreciate your uh, interest in our program. We hope to see you in September. Thanks everyone. Have a wonderful long weekend and hopefully there's no more snow for us here in Thunder Bay, but hopefully wherever you are, you have wonderful and enjoyable weather this weekend.